to my channel. This Hello. is our first like sit down video. Honestly, my first sit down video. And I don't know, we haven't like formally ever introduced ourselves to you guys, which I think is crazy because I've already put out like probably over 10 videos. So in this video, I figured we'd just answer some of your questions. In my last video, I asked for like general questions just about Rudy and I, our life, whatever. Um, and then I also came up with some questions that I just thought would cover the basics, and we're just gonna go through it. So yeah. And I'm tagging along for this one. Yeah, and I'm <laughs> forcing him to join me. Okay, so our names, I'm Courtney. I'm Rudy. We're married. Um, where did we meet and how long have we been together? Um, so we met in college, sophomore year of college, um, here. North Carolina. North Carolina, yep. And um, we've been together for... Close to nine years, I think. Close to nine years. So it seems super long, but we met in college. I was like 19 yeah. when we met, so... No, so and... that's, that's seven years at most, because you're 26 now. Yeah. Okay, eight years. I said almost nine years. Yeah. I don't know. So going on nine years. So it's been a long time. Uh, since like, since like what, 2017? Yeah, and yeah. I'm 26, but I'm turning 27. And you're... I'm 27, 27. going on 28. Yeah, so long time. Yeah, so we've been together a long time. Where do we meet? We met in college. Um, nothing special, just like through friends. Uh, we sort of happened to meet, and then we started hanging out. Just the college, um, it's like a around slow. campus, around dorms. Like we were obviously really young, so it's not like we were looking for a long-term relationship or um, that it was just grew. It yeah, just, like grew over time. Sort of, we were friends first, and it went from there. Yeah, um, obviously it worked out. How did you guys grow up? Family backgrounds. So I, my family is originally from like New York, New Jersey, but we moved to North Carolina when I was eight years old. So, I'm a southerner, but I was raised by northerners, um, and yeah, I didn't grow up with like a religious background. My background's kind of different, um, so I moved to the U.S. when I was about seven years old from East Europe um, with my family, so I was like pretty young. Um, my parents are pretty religious, like Baptist, very traditional, come from a farm sort of village. Yeah, I haven't been there. I've been really yeah. wanting to go. I'm gonna take her back to, to Eastern Europe, to Moldova at some point. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so really far Eastern Europe, country between Ukraine and Romania, really small country. They speak Romanian, and I've had that question before, because you and your dad have been like talking in a video before, and they're like, what yeah. language is that? Yeah, Romanian. So they speak Romanian. I said he was from Romania, just because people don't know Moldova, but he's from Moldova originally. Yeah. Um, so yeah. then we moved to the U.S. in 2005. I've been in the U.S. for most of my life now, like 20 years. So I'm 27, 20 years in the U.S. Um, I still have family back there. We go to visit once in a while. Um, every couple of years, it's a pretty long and expensive flight. Um, but I would still have family on my mom's side, and then a lot of my family has moved here. I have a lot of cousins. I have a big, huge... He has the biggest family I've ever seen. Huge <laughs> extended family. Um, he so. himself has three little sisters. I guess I didn't say that. I have, like, one brother. Um, both of our parents are still together. Yeah. Yeah. My but parents live, like, 20 minutes from us here. Her parents are about... 30 minutes. 30 minutes so here. we're big, like, family-oriented people. I feel like we're both raised that way. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, we're still that way. What are our religious views? So, we recently both got baptized. So, yeah. I was raised Christian. Um, and then I wasn't really focused on that part of my life for a while in college. I was still Christian, go to church, but not as like dedicated. I was more, more focused on my job and my work and whatnot. Um, but we're both Christian and I think we're sort of on our own We have paths. individual journey that kind of collided at one point. So I feel like what's super special is we actually got baptized together on the same day, um, which neither of us anticipated that that would happen. But I just was slowly introduced to Christianity when I met his family. Um, I wasn't raised that way. I didn't really have a lot of Christian friends, even though I'm in the South. And so I just kind of slowly became interested and opened my mind and my heart to it. And yeah, now we both love God and we're Christians, so. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Simple, simple answer. Yeah. Um, what do we do for a living? So, I've mentioned this in like one of my very early videos, but I don't know if anyone's watching those anymore. 
Um, so I, in college, studied marketing, specifically public relations, and then post-college I worked at two different financial institutions, um, credit unions specifically, in marketing, in social media. So I was actually doing like the corporate side of social media for four years post-college. Um, and then Rudy's companies started to take off, so I had the freedom to quit my job and just focus on passions, YouTube being one of them. So I don't work right now, but that's what I used to do. Yeah, she worked very hard for many years. Um, <laughs> Four years. Her job was very demanding. Yeah. Um, I started my one of my companies uh, like junior, senior year of high school, and I've been doing that for what is now going on like nine years. So I had my company before I met Courtney actually. Yeah. Um, and then um, it's in the online entertainment space. So we provide software and data to event promoters, artists. Um, and we recently started a new company called SameTix that helps you get the best prices on tickets. So pretty much what it is is a Chrome extension you add it to your computer. Anytime you go to any website like Ticketmaster or StubHub, it'll show you what the final price is with fees. And then if there is a cheaper, same exact seat or like same kind of road section, it'll show you where it is on a different website. So instead of having to like scour all the different marketplaces, um, you know, this will just show you what the price is with fees, so like you get the final price and also where you can actually get it for less money for like a similar seat. So that's sort of what I've been doing. Um, it's kind of like Honey, if you're familiar with the Honey Chrome extension that you can download. It's like a saver. You, like how much money you could save on specific products. It just automatically searches the whole internet so you don't have to look for discounts and stuff. Like that's kind of what his yeah. tool is, right. but specifically for if you're shopping for concert tickets. Or sports tickets, any kind of any kinds of tickets. Used it. Obviously a lot of people are we're biased it. promoting this. This is his company, but it's a free tool and it's really cool. So, yeah. So um, you're interested, it's called Same Ticks. Yeah, sameticks.com. It's yeah. you can just Google it and you'll find it. Yeah. Anyway. Thoughts on entrepreneurship. Yeah. I thought if anyone is an entrepreneur, then it's interesting to meet one who is successful and you actually studied entrepreneurship that was like his concentration my concept so i did a business degree um but my my concentration was entrepreneurship so a lot of it was like seed funding and how to like you know get money for startups and that was never really for me like i think it's useful information but i was always more like hey how can i sort of bootstrap and build something useful. So I was interested in entrepreneurship from like a very young age, like 14, 15. I was like reading books and like YouTube is a gold mine for all things entrepreneurship related. But I would say the number one thing that is correlated with success in any business really is patience uh, and also just being realistic with the financial side of things or like the number side of things. So that's kind of how my mind works, I think, in terms of long-term numbers, but also you have to be patient. So people sometimes will start something and say, hey, you know, all businesses fail and uh, whatnot, but like you can't really fail if you're persistent, but obviously you have to know how to change direction if something is not working or, you know, whether or not to start something if it makes any financial sense. So people sometimes will have really great business ideas, but they don't actually look at the numbers like, hey, how much, you know, is this like, going to be a business where I can make a livable wage or should I just get a job at the gas station clerk? So like you have to be realistic, but also you have to be persistent. So yeah, let's not get too deep Rudy's into it. He's been very persistent. But I mean, he said he started his first company back in high school. I mean, I wasn't even thinking about what I wanted to do for a living back in high school, but he was just trying things. Um, and I think I was motivated because my parents were sort of entrepreneurs in a way because we came from a different country so like being an immigrant like you sort of have a little bit of a struggle to sort of get your life situated and yeah. um, I saw my parents you know what they were doing they didn't always love their jobs but they were very hard working so I think those things rubbed off on me and I knew that like I didn't want to do like any difficult labor jobs so like I was like okay hey I gotta figure this out whether it's like college corporate job whatever but like I need to figure something else out um, and I think that was like a driving factor whether yeah. It was healthy or unhealthy, but a little bit obsessive. So that's that's sort of you know where I'm at. <laughs> He's an impressive guy. I'm proud of you. Um, let's see. Why did we decide to renovate our first house versus buying a move-in ready house? So 
So I've also touched on this in previous videos, but before we started renovating this house that we're sitting in now, we actually did try to purchase land and build a house. And actually even before that, we did try to just buy a house, like a normal person, just a move and ready house. Um, but it was 2020 or 2021, around the time we first started looking, um, housing prices were skyrocketing, interest rates were low, but it was just so competitive out there that we didn't have necessarily the funds to like compete with people who were buying homes at that time. For something that we liked. Yeah. Um, so we kind of scrapped buying a house for a while, but then came across an opportunity to build a house, which was looking more affordable at that time. Like I said, cause housing prices were just skyrocketing. Um, so we're like, okay, we'll just do this long-term thing of building a house. We found an affordable piece of land. And her parents helped us a little bit to buy the land. Yeah. Um, and then as we went through the process of trying to build it over the course of like, a year and a half, we had like one builder that like had some weird family emergency and he sort of bailed on us. And then the next builder, you know, he promised us, hey, it's gonna cost X amount of money. And then it ended up being, you know, every couple months it was like, hey, it's actually gonna be a hundred thousand dollars more. And that happened like twice. I don't wanna say we got conned. We got misled. We got misled by a lot of people. But I think they, they may have also just been unsure. So like the yeah. reason why it was difficult to build is like the land was kind of very sloped near a pond. It's beautiful, but when you have a sloped lot, um, you have to build a huge foundation and the foundation is like- Which we knew going into it, but when they first gave us quotes, it was a lot lower than like it was what like, the final quote was. It was like, hey, we're gonna build this house and we'll have equity because it's gonna be worth more than what we put into it. And by the time we were like about to start building it, we'd already gotten permits and started, you know, got the whole we had engineering, plan, engineering, everything. Like, we was, were deep into we this. Were, yeah, we just wasted a lot of money getting yeah. all that ready. Mm -hmm. By the time we were about to start it, it was like, hey, this house is gonna cost more to build than it's worth. Yeah. And for us, at the end of the day, like, we have to make financially sound decisions because we don't want to do something because it's a dream, but then like we're, you know, we're, we're house poor, yeah. like you have this house and you're stressing about paying the bill. So like, we were like, it's not, it's not worth it, doesn't make any sense. And not for our first it was, not worth it was super it. stressful yeah. for like a year and a half. It was like kind of like we were working, she was working full time, I was working and at the same time we were like trying to build this house and it was just like kind of stressful on both of us. Mm -hmm. And we finally gave it up and we, you know, sold the, the land. Um, actually her parents still own the land, but we sold it back to them. Um, and um, yeah. That's, and then we kind of stopped. Then we started house hunting. No, well, we took a break. We took a break from everything. We're yeah. like, we need to like recuperate, kind of like find center again. At that point, interest rates were going up again. Uh, yeah. So we were feeling discouraged to even buy a house. Um, but we were just kind of lightly looking here and there. My aunt's a real estate agent. So we were working with her and she let us kind of take our time. Um, and it was right around Christmas that we found this house. And I think searching around the holidays was like our golden ticket slash our praise our, our prayers the answer. <laughs> was our golden ticket because yeah. this house not many things were even selling for less than listed price but we got this house for less than listed price so we were able and to listed negotiate. price was reasonable and we were able to negotiate less than the listed price yeah which just like doesn't happen um right now but we went under contract like right before Christmas, I think the 24th. And uh, no one no one was doing that. Everybody's focused on Christmas, no one's house yeah, shopping. Yeah, it's no like one's a slow time. Really, really slow for like a period market. of time. Yeah. So that was lucky. Uh, we didn't even like really know we were doing that, but it sort of just worked out because we wanted to lock it in. Um, and then once we were under contract, you know, come January 1st, 2nd, you know, the seller saying, or the real estate agent telling us like, hey, there's like 10 offers on this house, but yeah, that was wild. Where, That's why it really felt like a God thing because when we offered, we were not up against anybody else. There and we got no bidding more, nothing. It was and we just got us. Money off. And we got money off the house because of it. They didn't have any interest. As soon as they accepted our offer, 10 backup offers. And they're at full price. Full I imagine price. maybe even overpriced. But like, I mean, yeah. I just feel like we were fated to be here. So, um,. Yeah, and we love it here. And we were okay with renovating our first home because Rudy's family's in the business. So they're in the My construction business. My dad's like a business. construction 
carpenter guy. So like, yeah. um, he's really good. Um, they've been doing it for a long time. So, so he kind of connected us with everyone we needed to. Painter, electrician, to flooring. Yeah. My dad did the cabinetry. I helped with the cabinetry and the cleanup. And yeah. so we, we were I both- I filmed that whole process. I we were very involved. And then Courtney was really good at like selecting finishes and colors. And she's very detail oriented, which kind of helped make sure everything was cohesive. Yeah, and it um, took us only three months to do less, less than three months, like two and a half months to do the renovation, and that's because of connections. But yeah, we were able to get like people lined up from you know everything we needed, like within one or two weeks, whereas normally that can take months. And we were able to do it for a price that I would probably spend half the amount of money. So like we're sort of lucky to be in that position where we have the connections and we're able to get these sort of deals. Mm -hmm. It's not like it was, you know, everything was handed to us. Like there are still obviously expenses for the labor and stuff, but we just know where to get a certain material for a deal or like where to get like, you know, my uncles work with tile. So we would get tile for a really good deal. One of my cousins does custom tile work. So we did our like backsplash and, and the bathrooms for a deal. So yeah, those things all came together and it like really, made it make like, sense. Felt right once we started working on this house it didn't feel like we were struggling and reaching and grasping and all the things anymore it felt easy and we felt at peace about it so it felt very like god sent and we're very happy to be here right yes any more questions yeah just a few more so i don't know if i said some of these questions were from you guys and some of them i just kind of pulled myself is this our forever home future renovation plans and would we ever move out of state that was like a mix of questions from the comments. Forever is a long time, so probably not forever, but a long time. Yeah. Like I imagine we'll be here for minimum five to 10 years um, because it's a nice house. It's like more house than we need and we've like made it into what we like. Yeah. And we have like nature and space. I like being able to go outside, um, you know. Just this to... could very well be a forever home. Like it's big enough for us. It's in the area but we what want is that, to what does that even mean? forever like, I'm like is know. this was this our dream home we never want to move you know no i'm gonna want to i think we'll want to move. at some point we'll move like Just i'm 27 and i think <laughs> i don't we'll think i'm gonna live here until like, i'm 90 or something. we just like. want change yeah, yeah i think we'll just want change at some point but i see us here for a long time the other question was like future renovation plans i want to update the bathrooms that's something we didn't touch during the renovation He's not, he actually kind of likes the bathroom as is. I think the tile's a little outdated. I just, but I don't like spending more money where like it's okay. It's pretty good. If we're here as long enough and it makes sense, we'll do it, yeah. I'd like to do that. And I then, would probably, so we have like space, like backyard space. So we have about an acre. So I would build another garage. Um, and then I could have like another car or project cars in there. I'm a car fan. So yeah, um, that would be something fun that I would want to do. But again, like, this is something that we would do. I thought you were going to say expand the porch. And we could expand the porch. Because that's my two things. Updating the bathrooms, which there's just two that I would touch, and expanding the porch because it's a little small and we have so much space back there. Yeah. But yeah. But this is like, I'm thinking like four to five. Like I'm not doing this. Would we time. ever move out of state? When I first met Rudy, I was convinced I'd even move out of country. Like I thought no, I wanted- not. You're not gonna move out of the country. No, but I was open to it. Like I studied abroad in Barcelona in college. And we traveled so much. Like I loved exploring the world. Now I was literally just sitting on the table like watching us do this. It's so cute. Um, so I think if you'd asked me like five years ago, I would say perhaps. Yeah, now that we're like, you know, we're in a settled spot, our next thing is probably gonna be having kids and stuff like that. I don't, and our whole family's here. I don't personally see us ever moving. The most I think we'd ever do is like, I don't know, maybe spend like a few, like have a summer house or maybe yeah, just like, rent like a summer house and you know, like split our time that way to explore a little more like long term. So we we, tra we travel around like we've, we've done a, like a decent amount of traveling and seen you know some countries in Europe and I think we want to see around the US I think we want to also visit like France a little bit more um, but I wouldn't really move out of state my family's here I have a lot of friends all my friends are here yeah 
people who sometimes the church move. networks here. Yeah, I, I, I'm no, I'm not interested in going somewhere where like I don't know anyone. I have to start from scratch. I have to like move all my stuff. We have a lot yeah. of heavy stuff. She likes heavy furniture. Um, so, so not really. No, like I don't think we'd ever leave to no, go probably. somewhere out of state. But like we would definitely. We're still gonna travel and it would be nice to have like maybe a, a beach house or you know maybe we'll do hey we'll do a month or two somewhere out of the country or another state because we're you know getting bored here and like my, my job is remote but again like we're still paying the mortgage so like yeah. um i think we're in north carolina i think we'll be here for a while forever. yeah it's nice north carolina is nice yeah <laughs> it is okay um this is the last question where do we see ourselves in five years slash what are our long-term dreams as a couple? Well, I kind of answer that question. Five yeah. years, we'll be here. <laughs> we'll probably still be in this house. Um, um, we'll probably have kids, I don't know, like one or two. And long-term dreams, I think your newest company is definitely still your ambition. Yeah. Um, but Rudy's such an entrepreneur. I would not be surprised if, like, throughout our life, he's starting up new companies or investing in companies and stuff like that. Um, so, like, career-wise, I feel like his job will always be evolving. Um, yeah, my job is very different than that. Yeah. Um, a couple, like, as a couple, what do we dream of? My dream is to go grow the company and. We kind of want some jet skis. <laughs> That's silly, but like I wanna we buy, live near a lake and we kind of want some jet skis. We live near a lake. Summer. We live near a lake. Yeah. Um, and jet skis guys are like fifteen thousand for like a new one. I wanted to buy one for like two grand, uh, like from the eighties, like super retro jet skis, just so we can like both have one and cruise. Just to get on the water. Cruise around. Like I don't need to go fast. I don't need anything. I just want to be able to just like scoot along. Um, but. Future yeah. plans? I don't I know. Kind just, of simple. Just like growing our family, growing your businesses. Growing. That's that's the plan right now. Growing. We've done we've done travel, like not to brag, but we've traveled around, like we've went to Europe like four times um, for multiple it weeks. It was our passion we were, when we were in our early yeah. 20s. Like that's what we wanted to spend our money on. And, and now, now, like, not as excited about traveling. No. Like, I just want to like we actually work. did a Florida trip recently though to Santa Maria Island and that was like an inexpensive flight. It was just two days. Like we honestly like that. $50 kind of trip. round trip flight with yeah. Frontier. Just like within the US, I think we're still interested in traveling. So stuff like that. Yeah. Growing this channel. I mean, that's one of my dreams. So yeah, that's that'd a long term fun. five year goal. We're uh, so yeah, still yeah. figuring out what we want to do a little bit. Uh, but we're happy. I think we're in a good place now. So right now it's just kind of like let's let's see where Keep it going. where God takes us. Yeah, true. Okay, well thank okay. you guys for watching. I, I have to get back to work. She pulled me away from work to do did. this video. I so. hope this answered. And a lot. this doesn't. Keep cutting me off. <laughs> Sorry. I hope this answers a lot of your questions. Um, if you have more, you can leave them down below. I can always answer them one off in like a vlog or something. But yeah. Till then, we'll see you guys in the next video. Probably not me, but... You're always there. Bye. Bye.